All right, Luke, uh, first of all, thanks a lot for the time. Uh, it's just been announced uh, your next fight is going to be against Clint Hester in Virginia, uh, April 4th. Uh, talk to us about uh, the UFC approaching you about this fight and uh, what your thoughts are on about fighting him. Um, you know, it's a pretty obvious fight. It's been around, should have happened for the last few years. I feel like I fought when we were both on the Ultimate Fighter, season 17. I was the first number one pick for Team Sonnen. He was the number one pick for Team Jones. So from that day, from that moment, I sort of thought we're going to fight at some point, you know, on the show, whatever was going to happen. And then when the show ended, he uh, got knocked out by Jimmy Quinlan and it, we never ended up transpiring to fight. Then you had to like fight off to get to the UFC. And I thought, well, they'll put me and Clint together because I was the number one pick. It just makes a nice story. Didn't happen. I fought Colin Hart and I beat him. He fought someone else and got in, you know, and then we both got in the UFC and we both had a pretty good run. Um, you know, we were... Both went three and zero. Oh. Uh, I still feel like I went four and zero, oh, maybe even five and zero. Oh. And then he went four and one in the UFC, so he's had a pretty successful career. And and we've I was at his not his last fight in Australia, but the fight before, and we were like cutting weight together in Texas, chatting to him like you know we're gonna have to fight soon. He's like yeah we're gonna have to fight soon, and it's gonna happen because we were both heading that sort of way. Uh, so we've been prepared for it both of us for a very very long time. I'm very like friendly with Clint. We get on very very well. I know his dad, I hang, we hang out all the fights whenever I see him. We're always talking on Twitter and stuff. So, you know, it's a bit of a different one. So when Joe said, you're fighting Clint Hester in Virginia, I was like, well, I'll get out of the way and then we can, you know, just keep going forward because I don't think we'll ever have to fight again. So I was going to ask you about the, your relationship and if there was maybe perhaps any animosity uh, from the house, but you just said, you know, you, you get along very, very well with him. Does that impact how you prepare for a fight or, you know, get your mental state of mind prepared for a fight? I, I think it makes it a lot easier. I think, like... Yeah, we're friends, but we understand how it works. We message each other saying, let's make sure it's a good fight, try and get 50 grand. And then it's like, you know, everyone's happy, trying to have the best fight of our lives. And uh, I don't have to research the guy. I don't have to, I know everything there is to know about him. I've seen all of his fights. I've watched him as a fan. I've cheered him on and wanted him to win his last four fights. Um, so I know everything there is to know. I've seen every single fight live. Uh, as in, watched it when it's been happening. And I've followed his career and he's done the same for me. So. We know each other's character. There's not going to be any animosity, any back talk. There's not, you know, we'll smile, shake hands at the weigh-ins, and all of that sort of stuff's preordained and already happening. So, you know, we just get on with training for the fight and hoping we can put on a great performance and, and get that bonus money. How have things been for you? Uh, obviously, last year it wasn't a good, good year for you in terms of you know your performances, and you've been quite open and honest about that. Yeah. Um, but how have you prepared yourself uh, mentally, and also I know you spent some time in San Diego as well. Uh, trying to you know, make sure 2015 is a better year for Luke Barnard. Yeah, I mean, I think 2014 was still a great year for me. I think I had experienced many things, did a lot of things, and I've grown an abundance in the sport, you know, in all assets of it. And just not just my fighting style, but maturity, the people I'm training with, you know, everything, who I'm surrounded by and where I'm going. And um, I just feel like there was a bit, a couple of bum moments in the year. Obviously, Germany was ridiculous. The decision that was was, was you know, given to me there when I lost to Sean Strickland, 100% won that fight. And that sort of spiraled me onto this next fight that I've just had, where I had a little bit of a, a shaky performance. And, you know, I still feel like I won two rounds out of three and I could have been given the win, but I'm not, it's not as bad as the Germany one, you know, it's not as bad. So I took it on the chin, well under Roger and, and you know, time to move forward. But it just now makes it mean this next fight, I need to remind people who I am. I need to remind the world who Luke Barnett is and the fights that I put on and the way I fight. And, you know, if you look at all of, you take those two fights out of the equipment, equation, all of my fights in my whole career, fighting career from day one amateur have been exciting. I never, I always go out there and try and finish. Uh, I got fight of the season on the Ultimate Fighter. I got fight of the night against Andrew Craig in Manchester. I got first round knockout in London. You know, like I, I'm always going after it and trying to put on good fights. Uh, and I've just, you know, there's been a couple of blips and that's the fight game. So. I need to come back strong now in this this next bout, and and you know I really need to put Clint Hester away impressively. So there's not extra pressure. I don't I don't think there's any extra pressure. I just want to prove it to the world because I already know what I'm capable of, uh, and I just need to hit hit the floor running and, and get it done. You know. It seems like Clint might be in a similar frame of mind to you. So obviously he's coming off a loss as well. I'm sure you know he wants to have a successful 2015. So perhaps maybe you can relate to what he might be going through right now in Canada. And it's, it's very different. You know, if you watch Clint's fight, he got finished pretty viciously uh, against Robert Whitaker, who was coming up a weight class. He's good. Robert's good. And he was on the Armour Fighter and, you know, had a bit of reputation. 
but it was a striking fight that Clint lost, and Clint's a striker, so I think he's got a lot more questions and shadows going over his his next bout, and now he's facing another striker. I'm obviously a bit different, a lot bigger and longer and all the rest of it, and I think he's going to be questioning himself a lot more than I am because I feel like I won the last two fights, and I've just just hasn't quite gone my way. Um, so I go into 2015 supremely confident. You know, I, I feel like I haven't been defeated. You know, what I mean, I mean maybe. The decisions haven't gone my way, but I haven't been defeated. I haven't, no one's beat me. I haven't been beaten by anybody. Clint has. He got knocked out, you know what I mean? So it makes a big difference. Um, but yeah, I can, I, I probably know how he's feeling and uh, I know where he's at. So he's going to be coming hard. And that's what makes this fight so exciting. The two number one picks from the Armour Fire, desperate to get a win. You're going to go out and stand in front of each other and bang. We're not going to, that's the game. We're not going to be messing around. There's going to be no tactics. We're going to stand in front of each other and see who's the better man on the night. Well, things have certainly changed in terms of your personal life, as you mentioned, since uh, you were last in the octagon. You spent, I think, the last uh, three, three and a half months in San Diego. Uh, you've been training at Alliance, I take it. Mm -hmm. um, is this going to be a permanent move for you, or will you come back to the UK and spend some time training here as well? Or what's the latest in that situation? Well, my, f my whole life's changed, completely changed. I'm getting married in eight months, um, so you know I've got that responsibility. And my family are moving to Spain, so I have no family home in England anymore. So. The move to Alliance happened before this, and it's sort of just the the. I remember the day I went to Alliance. It was the first training session. It was a grappling training session by Neil Melanson, uh, and I walked in, and I was like, you know, it was a big moment. I'd given up everything, changed my life, moved, you know, completely uprooted myself and gone to this new new camp, and it had to work. You know, I mean, I walked in there. I'd spent a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort. And Neil showed one thing, like it was the first thing he showed. And I looked around the room and I saw like Dominic Cruz, Mike Chandler, Phil, all the guys. Like, that's cool. That's really good. And, and then I was like, if these guys think what Neil was showing is great, I mean, I thought it was unbelievable. And that was day one. I was like, the decision was right. I should be here. This is where I need to be. Um, so it's, it's going to become a permanent move pretty much. I'll be back in, into England to, to catch up with my training partners back home and you know, I'm still going to have family there, so I'll be back and forth. But my main training camp are always going to be at San Diego, uh, at Alliance, under Eric Del Fierro. And I've sort of handed him my career. I've said to him, listen, I need a head coach. You take care of it. Tell me what to do, and I will do it. You know, I'm a disciplined guy, and I do whatever I can to win. So he's uh, given me what I need to do, and let's see if it works. That's a lifestyle change as well, isn't it? I mean, we were talking off camera earlier on. Uh, San Diego, you said, you know, I think the, the third... Uh, best city in the world to live in or something along those lines. What's it been like just to kind of be in San Diego in that sunshine, you know? It's, I, it's not just in the sunshine. I, obviously, I'm uh, a bad boy ambassador now, so I'm under the bad boy banner, and they have looked after me like, any, like I'd never wish, you know. It's been incredible. They gave me a car to drive out there. They gave me a place to live. I was living on a yacht in San Diego in the sunshine, waking up every day on the, on the sea, on the water, you know, in the marina with seals and all this sort of having my morning coffee. Incredible. And the, the environment there is so relaxing, it's so focused. All I care about is training. I have nothing else. I've got no, you know, it sounds weird, but like no friends, no one around me to like, not drag me down, but to take my attention away from it. And my family, you know, oh, it's mum's birthday, whatever. No, it doesn't matter. I'm in San Diego, you know, I'm training. So uh, it's just a completely different vibe. And then you've got the high caliber of training there with all the guys. So great relaxing time, very, very, nice environment to be in and then hard hard training twice three times a day and it is it's it's gonna you'll see over the next few fights the difference it's gonna make a huge difference well let's let's uh, let's look at april 4th finish this off envision the fight how does it play out and how do you beat it as well? you know clint's a, a wild man comes forward swinging big heavy shots you avoid the big punches and you know i use my superior stand-up skills and i take him out i think the second round He's going to start reaching a little bit more, start coming a bit harder, and I flourish when people come at me. And I can't wait for Clint to come at me because I know he will. I know he wants to. We spoke about it, and then we're going to fight. And, and that's I like to be in a phone box fighting. I like people to really put it on me, you know. And he's going to put it on me, and I'm going to put it on him, and I'm going to come out on top.